¿Qué? Alright guys, it is that time. It is that time for my most anticipated film of 2018. You already know what movie it is and I'm so super duper excited to talk about it. I finally can talk about it and now that I can, you're probably wanting to know, is the movie any good? Does it live up to the hype? Is this movie the best movie in the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe? Well, let's get into it. My name is Brendan Keith Avery. And this is just my opinion. What's going on, guys? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Black Panther. I really do appreciate it. But before we get into the review, let me I want to let you know that this is a non-spoiler review, so you don't have to worry about spoilers. I will be coming out with that review later, so just rest assured I am not going to spoil anything for you. But before I get started, go ahead and help your boy out by clicking that subscribe button. Also, click the little bell so you can be notified when I make uploads and give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get Get this video to 100 likes oh actually let's see if we can get it to 1000 that would really help me out so you know i was really lucky i was uh able to see the uh the film early they gave us these little black panther pins right here that i think is pretty cool so you can check that out i don't know if you can see that also uh we got these nice little imax posters and that's pretty cool i'm probably gonna get this framed and uh hang it up in my hallway because i, I love that a lot but you know guys black panther um I really am, have been looking forward to this movie. Not only is this my most anticipated movie of 2018, it is my most anticipated movie in my entire life. I have never looked forward to a movie more than this for obvious reasons. And those obvious reasons is, you know, we may have had a black superhero before like Blade and Spawn and Hancock and things like that. But, you know, me as a black man um, living in America, I've never had a predominantly black cast like this with such a large budget at minimum of around 130 million dollars and so you know going into this my expectations were super high um, I was also besides me being very excited I was very scared and I was very nervous I was like man this movie cannot suck please I don't want it to suck and you know I always like to be honest with my reviews and you know if it does suck I'm gonna say it suck but guys rest assured I'm not even gonna waste any more time I'm not gonna lead into it I mean this movie was freaking amazing I loved it it was pretty much everything that I wanted it to be and slightly more and I really cannot wait to see it again and again and again and I really can't wait for everybody to see it again because this movie is like a true triumph it is a true marvel even though this is you know a uh, pun intended you know with this being a marvel studios movie um this is the 18th movie in the entire um, um in the marvel cinematic universe and whether it is the best or the favorite of course i will touch on that you know towards the end of this review but i pretty much loved it there is pretty much nothing that i can complain about and um you know i just want to go i just i just i just had to let you know that early on now this movie is being directed by ryan coogler you probably already knew that written and directed by him um he also did Fruitvale Station and also Creed and so he has a great track record and I can honestly say that right now um, you know he is three for three and I can't wait for him to come back and do Black Panther 2. I don't know if he's already signed on the dotted line but after seeing this movie I cannot uh, imagine that he will want to choose anything else. Um, I'm also excited because this after seeing this movie I know it's going to make a ton of money. It's going to make one billion dollars easily. That's just I just know that. The question is is it going to make 1.5 and just how great the movie is you know you probably said okay brandy this is not gonna make 1.5 billion dollars oh i don't know if you've seen the movie comment below if you haven't i mean it's just that good there are going to be tons and tons of uh, repeat viewings and with this movie being the 18th in the marvel cinematic universe one of the things that i really did like about it is you probably heard this before from other people but this really is a movie that it stands on its own and is nothing like any other movie that came before it that is in the mcu that is possibly the best thing about it and with it standing alone it really does embrace the blackness i mean like blackity 
blackity blackity black i mean like i mean i'm proud to be a black man but after seeing this movie you know right now when i was watching it i was smiling ear to ear just geeking you know like uh, a kid at christmas or i'm finna get my ice cream cone seeing the movie and right now already on on top of being proud to be a black man i'm even prouder because i mean that's just how i feel and that's just how everybody in the movie uh, was portraying themselves and their character and the storyline and everything that they was trying to protect and they just loved dearly to them, you know, and that's just something that I really, uh, I really respect. So, I mean, this movie just, it, it like, it just the tone of it, it stands alone. Nothing like it has ever come before. It looks different. It feels different. It really feels like a place. I mean, this is set in a fictional uh, country in Africa called Wakanda, but it actually did feel like a real place. And that's just another thing that I really did like about this movie is like the world building. There was a scene at the very beginning that did have a lot of significance to it. But at the same time, I was just looking at it, just kind of saying, okay, you know, this has some significance to it. I wonder if this is going to come back around, circle back around later and make a more valid point. And it did. And I'll touch on that. But just like one of the, just like all the little details that goes into this movie like the subtitles they will use like african uh subtitles or a language that i've never heard of before and then translate it on screen into english and that just alone right there the just small details set it apart from anything else and just kind of just you know sucked you into the movie because you're just like when you're watching it you're just like man i want to know more i want to learn more what is this you know secret wakanda nation all about what are all the secrets what are all the jewels you know i want to know everything i wish there was like a giant textbook you know that i can learn and read more i mean and that's the thing you know that it's fake you know that it's fictional but you still want to know more about it and like something else just like all the pride that they had in this movie i mean from the uh from the cinematographer who is Rachel Morrison, who worked on, uh, she worked on Dope and Mudbound. Um, Dope is a movie that came out a number of years ago. Mudbound came out on Netflix, a Netflix original uh, last year that had to do with uh, black people at the end of World War II when it was coming back. But Rachel Morrison, she is a fantastic director of photography. She's a fantastic uh, cinematographer. All the colors in this movie popped. Let's like pop crazy out of nowhere. It was just like there was rainbows all over this movie. Just from the mountains, the grass, the hilltops, the sky, the mountains, nighttime, sunshine, um, costumes, all that good stuff. Weapons. It just all looked beautiful. Like inside of mountains, there was like never a point uh, in this movie to where there was not anything bright and colorful to look at that you're just smiling about. And that's just something that you really never ever got and all the other uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe films. And she also got the help from uh, Ruth E. Carter, um, the costume designer in this movie. I mean, seriously, I wish the costumes in this movie were just so dope. I wish that I could just go and buy them at a store right now. I mean, there were a good like four or five, six, seven outfits that I will rock in public with no shame at all. Just like, you know, yeah, look at me, baby. I know I look good because they really did look good in this movie, um, especially like Ramonda, who is being played by uh, Angela Bassett. Just seeing her and her costume as the queen with her beautiful gowns and her beautiful dress and like you know her beautiful hats and hairdresses and you know pieces and things like that i mean i loved it all i love like their i love their royal clothes i love their dress down clothes i just loved everything about it from the you know the costumes and like i said the cinematography all that was freaking fantastic it was great i love the history that was set up in this movie as well in this film as well it does have a deep uh, historic lore to it that kind of shows how well Wakanda started and just kind of how all the five tribes in this movie I mean you have the royal tribe or the royal palace you have the Jabari tribe that hangs up, up in the mountains you have the river tribe you have the mining tribe and you also have the border tribe and all these tribes have um, a really distinct a way of living and they're all different but they all really do respect each other this is not a movie just with senseless infighting in between tribes there is a little infighting but the thing about it is you completely understand you know why they are fighting briefly amongst themselves 
If you've seen Captain America Civil War, you know, unfortunately, uh, T'Chaka, he died. He met his demise. Uh, the actor playing him is John Canny. And this movie picks up like right after that. You know what I'm saying? And so like the whole nation is just like, oh, we don't know what to do. Who is just going to, you know, take the throne now? And then the way that they told the story, you know, as far as that concern, I loved it. And I'll come back to story in just one moment. But speaking about John Candy, something, John Candy, excuse me, something that really pressed me. And if you go back to, uh, there was an interview with him on the on the red carpet, or in this case, the purple carpet at the world premiere that was like a week or two ago. And he brought up the fact that he was like, OK, when he was in Captain America Civil War, he went over to the directors, um, John and Anthony Russo, and was like, hey, look. I know this is a fictional fictional nation, Wakanda, but it's in Africa. Predominantly, the whole thing is in Africa. The whole thing is a Wakanda. If I'm an African king and, you know, my son is an African prince, are we going to be talking English the whole time? Why am I going to be talking English to my son? That really doesn't make sense. And so what they did in this movie and, you know, and in that movie, you know, he had them actually speaking a real South uh, African language. And they did that, too. This movie is not just in English. It's predominantly in English because I mean, that's just the way it is with Marvel and them trying to cater over because this movie was made in the States. It's being put out worldwide, but still, I think you get the point I'm talking about. They really do use a real South African language called Isi uh, Osa, and they are known for their uh, distinctive clicks. You know, if you want to just say the the uh, the vowels is A, E, I, O, U. And they use that in this movie a lot and you get subtitles and it's not confusing or anything like that. You know, you can keep up with the subtitles, but I like that they had that level of authenticity in the movie and uh, really just pays a lot of respect, you know, to the African culture that is, you know, on a different continent than I am right now. And so that's just another thing that I like. Another thing that, you know, they uh, was just paying respect to, you know, I'm not deep within my African roots, but at the same time, you know, I am black and that is just something that I do appreciate. And also them just wanting to put on the forefront because this movie also does address a lot of political um, issues that are not just in a fictional comic book that actually have to do with the real world that we live in today, right now in 2018 and 1900 and, you know, 100 years before that, you know, it, de it deals with all of that. And so for them just to have so much pride and just like, no, I mean, the other parts of the world were colonized uh you know by other other people other groups of people he's like no we're going to you know stay deep uh rooted you know in our culture and that's just something that just really made me smile when i was watching this movie something else that really just blew me away is wakanda is a fictional nation i've said that like seven times but it is the most technology technological advanced nation in the entire world and when I was going into this movie, I knew that I know a little bit about Black Panther. I haven't read every comic book, but I know that. But I was still just blown away. But with all the features and secrets and the level of technology that they had, I was like, man, wow, this is freaking amazing. Like I was just blown away. Just like like all the little gadgets they had. Just, I would just saying to myself, man, I wish I had this little gizmo, that little gadget, this little tool right here, this little resource. Even though you're going in knowing that they are technology, that technologically advanced advanced more than everybody else you're still going to be blown away by all the technology and it's just something that i'm like thinking about right now just geeking out just like man i cannot believe all the stuff that they had in this movie um something else that blew me away was the scenes at the waterfall that was very beautiful as well um just seeing all the different tribes up on the mountain and the way they pay respect to their culture and i'm just going to get to story in just a moment but uh something that really just stood out to me there was the level of fighting the fighting in this movie is pr is done pretty well um especially early on in the film doing these scenes at the waterfall where they're trying to where someone is trying to necessarily take up the mantle of the new king. They did that very well. That was like freaking perfect. One of the other things that I liked in this movie so much that was, you know, top notch. Music in this film was freaking fantastic. The score that was done by Ludwig Gorson, who also worked with Ryan Coogler in the past. I mean, he really knows what he was doing. Everything was popping. I was loving every moment of it. And also the soundtrack that was done by Kendrick Lamar. You know, that was fantastic as well. If you have not bought 
bought the soundtrack, please buy the soundtrack. You will not, uh, you will not regret it. It was freaking amazing. That's just something else that I like. And also, this movie is not a, a comedy. I wouldn't say that at all. But there are a lot of funny moments in this movie. Seriously, coming from certain actors and actresses that I wouldn't even expect. You know, some and also uh, something when it comes to comic book movies or really just any movie, something that's really difficult for me uh, or a, diff, a task that's difficult to pull off in the film is combining comedic moments and also serious moments. And they did that very well, especially from Letitia Wright. Going into this movie, I was very skeptical of her. I wasn't feeling her necessarily in all the trailers, but she was actually one of my most favorite characters in this movie, and I loved everything about her. Uh, Black Panther himself, Chadwick Boseman, T'Challa, he was freaking fantastic as a leading man. I mean, we've seen him, Mr. Bioctic, in uh, Get On Up. We've seen him in 42. We've seen him in, uh, you know, he made his debut in Captain America Civil War, and he was also in this. I mean, I loved him as T'Challa. His acting was was great i felt him when he was you know feeling powerful as the new king of wakanda and i felt him in his low moments as well i mean like i felt his pain i felt his frustration i cannot wait to see what he's going to do next after this besides like avengers infinity war and you know black panther 2 i mean i already loved him as well uh before you know he also did a great uh he also did a great job in marshall but he even did a better job in this um Lupita Nyong'o as Nakia. She was freaking fantastic. You know, what's up, my beautiful dark chocolate sister? You are beautiful. Um, I love everything about you in this movie as well. She is a spy that goes off in different parts of the world and comes back and reports to uh, reports to Wakanda just so they can make sure that they stay on top. Daniel uh, De Denai Guerrero, you know, Michonne in The Walking Dead who plays Okoye. She was freaking badass as well. She is somebody that you do not want to mess with. She will kick your ass and laugh at you after, when she's done with it. I mean, she was very powerful in this movie. And I, I'm, I'm really, you know, glad to say because, you know, not only are there powerful, you know, black women in this movie, but beautiful, you know, dark chocolate sisters, too. And just, you know, me growing up in America and not everybody felt this way, but I do know how, you know, how it was for some, you know, uh, dark skinned women and some of the things that they had to just grow up with. You know, and I can't speak on other parts of the world, but I can speak in this country here. And I, I can understand a lot of the frustrations they had and, you know, the the mental constraints that they had growing up. So to just see these two beautiful women on screen, also uh, Florence, what is her name? Florence Kayombe, uh, who plays Ayo, and she's part of the Dora Milaje as well. I mean, her and... Uh, Denai Guerrero, part of the Dora Milaje, they are like the royal guard for Black Panther. The way they were depicted in this film is just fierce warrior women that are, are not, you know, taking no crap out of nobody that will freaking thrash you if you just cross them or even look at them a certain way. Very strong, beautiful, powerful women in this movie, and I loved it. I spoke on Ramonda, played by Angela Bash, and she did a great job. Uh, Winston Duke as M'Baku. In the comments, he's known as M'Baku, the man ape, but of course, they tried, to, they took the man ape. Uh, part out of his name because they didn't want to be offensive and you know I completely understand that you know he's great in this movie too Daniel Kalula as Wakabi I loved him Sterling K. Brown I loved him also uh, uh, wasn't that Forrest Whitaker as Zuri I loved him too I mean you know there was no performance in this movie that that was just not top notch I mean there are so many great things about this movie these characters and everything I'm pretty sure that this movie is going to be uh, nominated for an Oscar on some levels whether it's the score the soundtrack whether it's the cinematography or um, maybe adapted screenplay or I'm sorry original screenplay or costumes or something like that there was just so much good in this movie that you know cannot be ignored that has to be addressed uh, Andy Serkis as Ulysses Claw he was a badass villain he was freaking crazy he was nuts when he was on screen I was like oh my gosh you know we got to stay away from this guy um I love pretty much everything that they did with this character, except for this one little tidbit thing that I will touch on in my uh, spoiler spoiler field review that's going to come out later on this weekend. Uh, I want to wait a little bit before I do that. Give it a uh, give it some gap, but I, I want to wait on that. And of course, I wanted to say this for last, but Michael B. Jordan as Eric Killamonger, man, this dude. People are saying that he is the best villain in the whole MCU since Loki. You know, he's even higher than that. Michael B. Jordan is the best villain in this movie. No, I'm sorry. Michael B. Jordan as Eric Killermonger is the best villain in the entire MCU, hands down. He is so much better than Loki. 
Um, and I like Loki. He is so much better than Hela, um, um, uh, Robert Redford, and Captain America Winter Soldier, and better than everybody else. Like, seriously, this dude, like, they always say that a good villain is somebody that thinks they're right. And not only does uh, Eric Killamarg or Michael B. Jordan think that he's right in this movie, he is right on a lot of fronts. Like, I agree with a lot of his points. I empathize with the dude and I sympathize with him. And everything that came out of his mouth was right. He is frustrated. He is angry. He is like, man, this is a bunch of BS, man. What the hell are y'all doing? And I'm just sitting there like, bro, I understand where you are coming from. And the way that this film addresses, like, you know, going over to the story now, the way that the film addresses, you know, black people around the world, it touched me right here. It touched my soul because I, I, I agree with it. I can relate to it. I don't want to say anything because I don't want to ruin it for you. And I'll talk about that in my spoiler field review. But when Eric Killamonger was on screen, I was like, I was a little terrified. I'm like, dang, this dude is serious. You know, he has wait. He, you know, you see it in the trailer. It's like, I've been waiting on this my whole life. And you know, this is mine. And I don't want the throne. And I do not blame him. He is a freaking great villain. And, you know, I sided with him. Like, I, I, I cannot stress that enough. I, I sided with him. You know, he was right on so many fronts. Um, I, I can say that, you know, to when I'm blue in the face. I mean, I understand where he's coming from. And there was just within the story, there is so much conflict in this movie. And I, I, I mean, I see both sides of it. This is not just some stupid playground infighting in between tribes. Everybody is fighting for a valid reason. And, it, you know, some people may not know what I, I, I agree with this side and I agree with this side equally. The only thing I don't agree with necessarily is the methods that possibly Eric Killamonger would have took, Michael B. Jordan would have took to get the goals that he want accomplished. But at the same time, you know, I do understand where he's going from, going going through. And then also going back to Chadwick Boseman, to Child of Black Parents, the, just the arc that he had, you know, he's trying to get advice, you know, he's a good man, and you have to be a good king as well. And just that, that balance that he has to find between the two of those and very important roles is very hard. And he's like, should I follow the path of my elders, my old ancestors, or should I, you know, do my own thing? Like Nakia brought up in the trailer, like, hey, you get to choose what type of king you want to be. And, uh, you know, he chose that. And just the way that this film addressed, you know, everything in the movie, um, it just really just spoke to me. Now, um, I don't want this review to be too long. Is this movie perfect? Okay. Is it a 10 out of a 10 perfect? No, it's not. It is not a perfect 10 out of 10. And I'll talk about my little nitpicks now. Now, I didn't read any reviews going into this movie, but I did catch a few of them on YouTube because I just couldn't help myself. I was just so excited. But there was, uh, you know, Andre, the black nerd, uh, you know, I watched his review and one of his complaints in the movie was he didn't like the pacing in certain parts. And that honestly didn't bother me at all. I had absolutely no problem with the pacing at all. I thought that that was perfectly fine. What bothered me was while the story was great and the characters were great and the world building was great and, and the music and the costumes and the cinematography, all that was perfect. What bothered me was the action. Now, the action was not bad. The action was good, but it just did not pop off the screen the way I necessarily wanted it to. And when I say the action, I mean the very end scene, the third act, that action scene. It was a great action scene and it was well choreographed, but there was a ton of CGI and just kind of like the balance between the CGI and the real life acting that was going on on screen. It didn't mesh well um, necessarily for me the best. Now, the action, like all the little baby action scenes at the beginning, like in the casino or when they're doing the car chase and Black Panther's on the car or when they're doing the fighting one on one during the waterfall trial. Oh, that was perfect. And I loved all that. That was very well choreographed. But I remember when I saw Captain America Civil War, the action in that movie, I was like, oh, 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 shit, oh, oh. I was doing all of that. I was not doing that in this movie. And that's perfectly fine. You know, I just cannot come, I cannot honestly walk out of this movie and just be like, man, the action from top to bottom was freaking badass and da 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 I mean, it was good, guys. It was great. I'm not crapping on it, but I just wish that it would have been a little bit better. Uh, but really, that is my only complaint. I really don't have anything else to complain on. I freaking love this movie. 
I cannot wait. If if you want to see this movie, please see it on the biggest screen possible. Um, I saw it on IMAX. I saw it in the real IMAX theater because some IMAX theaters will lie to you and say that it's really IMAX, but it's not. But I saw this on a real uh, IMAX screen. And so see this on the loudest, biggest screen as possible um, that you can. I freaking love this movie. I cannot wait to see it again. And I cannot wait for everybody to see it either. It's going to make a ton of money. If I had to rate Black Panther out of a 1 out of 10, I would give this a 9.25 out of 10. Yes, a 9.25 out of 10. But guys, that is just my opinion. Have you seen Black Panther? Were you lucky enough to see it earlier? Do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you don't, that's fine. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Go to my website. Check me out there book market and also look me up on social media facebook instagram and twitter all that good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen and i made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff there in the description box below but guys i just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for black panther written and directed by ryan coogler starring chadwick boseman as t'challa black panther man i cannot wait to see this movie again and before you go don't forget that my name is brennan keith avery and that's just my opinion Peace.